Good afternoon, and today we're going to continue the lesson. So first and foremost, apologies for not being able to make it for the live session, and possibly I will even be make, able to make it tomorrow as well, since I have the vaccine. So I will be sending you two sessions recorded. Um, what I will do is that both, uh, definitely tomorrow, I will have at least the last 15 minutes, which will be question time. And for today's, I will see if it's possible for me to have, again, another 15 minutes for question time. Apologies, two things popped out and I cannot cancel them. One of them is the vaccine and another one is a final lecture, one of the modules that I have to attend. So we have around half an hour, a little bit less than half an hour for the recording. This should be normally the time frame for a normal lesson. Because in a lesson, we stop a few minutes, we discuss, we speak, you ask questions, even giving some time to actually for everyone to settle down. So hopefully this will be equivalent, okay? And by tomorrow, I would like to have finished the carbonyls as well. I will also be sending you over the coming day or two, the answer, oh, a video about how to answer the questions that you had when you are second test. A lot of students struggled with a few things um, with regards to the difference, how to choose between SN1, SN2, E1, E2. I have sent a few emails to those who have asked me questions and I pretty much copied and pasted one of the charts that you have in one of the final slides of the presentation where you will have to look at the nucleophilicity, the strength of the nucleophile, primary, secondary or tertiary carbons, and whether you have steric hindrance. So I will be sending that and explaining all of the questions through that diagram, through that chart. And that should in theory help you out immensely. Now, continuing on carbonyls, we were adding water in, this, in the previous reaction. So today we're gonna be adding alcohol. So same as water, initially it forms a hemiacetal. So a hemiacetal is when you have C single bond O, C single bond O. And the rate here can be either smaller or bigger than one, because this is very dependent on what the R groups are going to be. Okay, now this can be either acid or base catalyzed, same thing. If it's gonna be acid catalyzed, you first protonate the carbonyl. If it's gonna be base catalyzed, like the previous one, okay? You're gonna start by addition of the nucleophile, opening up the O single bond, oh, the O double bond C, okay? So it's gonna be very, very similar to the water. But instead of water, you're gonna be adding an alcohol. This is, you can also have an intermolecular variant, which is very important in sugars. Uh, we'll not be covering it in this module. And this would actually be favored by entropy since you will start with one molecule and you will then lose a water molecule. So we start with one molecule, end up with two, and therefore delta S will be negative. Apart from this, intermolecular reactions, due to the vicinity, due to the facility of actually reaching the target where you want to attack, these tend to always take place, even if the reactivity is a bit lower. Okay, here, you will also be, you will also end up getting a situation where you are going to form a new stereocenter. Okay, apart from this now, please note that this reaction is 99% yield. Okay, what does 99% yield means? It means that, it means that you will be able to actually um, do get all your reaction to, come go, to go to completion. We can drive this reaction further with more alcohol and with H+. Um, so the reason for this is if you add more alcohol, you are going to shift the reaction, to the equilibrium to the right. But, okay, If you want to, to move the reaction forward and adding a proton, okay, you will end up protonating the double bond O and making the carbon a lot more electrophilic, available to react with the alcohol, okay? Now, acetyls, acetyls 
are very important, as it is, are very important protecting groups. Protecting groups are groups where you actually do react in a reaction, for example, to the carbonyl here, so that you can do re reactions in other places without that carbonyl reacting. And acetyls, in fact, are going to be very stable to bases, oxidizing agent, and nucleophiles, whereas acetyls are not stable to acid. In fact, a way how to reverse, a way how to reverse this reaction would be to actually add a an acid apologies. So you might say, so how is it that you push it forward with H plus? Remember, when you push it forward with H plus, you're going to have the ROH in solution. So at that point, even if this is unstable, it's still going to be pushed to the right because of a Chatelier's principle that you don't need. And this is the mechanism. OK? So the hemiacetal and the acetal. Hemiacetal is when you have OH and OR. Acetal is when you have two OR groups. The H plus will react with the nucleophile. Sorry, will react with the carbonyl, producing an OH plus. OH plus you can then stabilize by produce, putting the carbon, the positive charge on the carbon, which can be attacked by the nucleophile. This is a very weak nucleophile. Alcohols are weakly nucleophilic, but still. Even though they are weak nucleophilic, here the concentration is going to favor the nucleophile. Okay, so it will shift forward to produce the hemistyl. Okay, and at this point you lose the proton, and once you lose the proton, then you can actually. Apologies. Once you lose the proton, then you can actually form the hemistyl. Okay, then the reaction can be repeated once more to form the acetal. And you might tell me, but how will this happen? So first and foremost, OH is not a good leaving group. But as we've said, whilst OH is not a good leaving group, OH2 plus will form water, therefore it will be an exceptional leaving group. Once that happens, okay, once that happens, then you can actually form, lose the water, and then you can actually form a positive carbocation, which can be attacked by another nucleophile, which in this case would be the ROH. This can, in theory, lose the H plus and form a crystal. Of course, these reactions are reversible, and you can go back from the acetal to the initial ketone or aldehyde. I wanted to say something, apologies, because I made a mistake earlier on. The delta S is going to be positive, but you will not be forming a second molecule, OK? The delta S is going to be positive, but you're not going to be forming a second molecule. It's just that once you form rings, rings are going to be extremely more stable, extremely more ordered than non-rings, okay? Than linear, linear, linear lipidic structures. Apologies, I made a slight mistake there. Now, the intra, and here we're gonna actually speak about the intramolecular variant, okay? Where you are going to be protecting the carbonyl group and the diol. So we will not be protecting more than one place. So cyclic acetylization, in this case, this is not going to be intermolecular here, OK? Cyclic acetyls, you are going to get a normal ketone, get a diol, and you can either protect the diol or the ketone. You can also protect both, but normally we'll use this to protect one or the other. So if you have a ketone, you use et 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 et
a diol, not just a tan diol. If you have like if you have any diol that you want to protect, you can add a ketone and use it as a protecting group. Because once this reaction happens, once you react and any other carbon that you want, then you can simply reverse it by adding H plus. Okay, then you can simply reverse it by adding H plus. So let's see some reactions here. So if we were to add carbonyl and the green yard, okay, so here step two, you're making the green yard, right? That will react with other groups, with other cyclic cyclopentanones to actually react and to actually form an intermolecular compound, or you can even have an intermolecular reaction with other, with other reactants in solution. But what you can do is you can add the diol. The diol protects, okay? The diol protects by forming an acetal, do your reaction, and at the end, after the Grignard reaction itself, you can hydrolyze with water and get your, keto your ketone back. If you start with a diol, you can use a ketone, form the acetyl group, do any reaction you might want, and then reverse the reaction by removing the H plus. Okay, and I believe that this would actually be something very, very important. So please, these kind of reactions, knowing step by step what you should be doing, and knowing step by step how to do them and how to achieve them are actually very important. They will give you, okay, they will give you a very, very big idea, a very important setup on how to improve. Thiols also form thioacetals, which are even better protectors than the acetals because they are also stable to acids. And thioacetal is when you have the sulfur instead of the oxygen, okay? So thioacetal hydro hydrolysis can be done using silver chloride, calcium carbonate in acetonitrile. It's a little bit harder conditions, but even though it's harder conditions, this will actually mean that you can do your reactions in acidic conditions. So you won't do this if your reaction is going to be with a nucleophile or with or under basic conditions. You will use thioacetals if you are going to have reactions, if you are going to have reactions where you are going to actually require the use of an acid. Okay? Now, thioacetals can also be used, can also be reduced to the alkane. So let's say you have the carbonyl and you want to reduce it to the alkane. You can first protect it or react it with ethane dithiol. Okay, so these are thiols here. And once you do that reaction, okay, once you do that reaction, then you can reduce with rain and nickel and hydrogen to form the alkene. So this is a good way how to remove the C double bond O. You have also done the reaction with zinc in mercury and HCl. This is going to be very similar. Okay, now, again, that reaction, zinc in mercury in HCl, is going to be a bit of a problem because you are using mercury. Now, acetals can be used in drug preparations, okay? And for me, I know I look young. I'm a little bit older than you, I'm only 19. No, I'm a bit older than that, yeah. But of course, these reactions, we are gonna be doing them, we're gonna be using them for industrial purposes. Okay, so the drug reservatorol, for example, it's not a troll at all. It is an anti-aging drug. 
okay, where it, it seems to extend the lifespan of those using it. Now, when we say it extends the lifespan, we're not going to be immortals, but we're going to be able to age a little bit better. And overall, we tend to be aging a little bit better. Okay? Now, the problem with reservatrol is that it's immediately hydrolyzed in the water, oh, in the body. So it's metabolized, it's reacted, and it's destroyed. So a solution would be to actually do this reaction, uh, do like this drug as an acetal, and this group will slightly slow metabolism, and therefore it will last. It will last a little longer. You can also add amines. Now, amines are nucleophiles, and as nucleophiles, they're gonna act the same way as the alcohol as the water in fact this reaction would be a little bit faster and this is a condensation reaction meaning you are going to be losing water okay so this is a nucleophilic dehydration reaction so first you add the amine producing the alcohol then you will dehydrate losing water forming an amine amines are this group okay and in fact amines are actually very valuable because they are highly reactive. And it means, as far as I remember, it serves well, they were one of the first few organic catalysts. So our catalysts normally we use metals. It means have been used as organic catalysts in the past. So the mechanism is that you first have the normal, okay? You have the normal addition. So the nucleophile adds to the carbonyl, producing an alcohol and an amine. Remember, because you're gonna have a positive nitrogen and a negative oxygen, you are going to first lose the proton from the nitrogen and it goes to the alcohol, okay? But then the nitrogen can lose another proton and the carbon will lose the, ox the OH. This might be a little bit better. It might be a little bit easier if you first reprotonate the alcohol, so you will be losing water. Here is drawn as one step and you will form the amine. Okay? And in fact, you have the mechanism broken down into a number of steps. So first you protonate. Once you protonate, you can lose the water. Once you lose the water, you lose a proton from the nitrogen to form the amine. Okay? And this is exactly so, for example, if I were going to ask you for a mechanism, I would want this one in full detail, not this one. And the reason why I wouldn't want the top one is it doesn't have all the steps. It is a little bit a Yahamoiru in Maltese. Of course, you can do this intramolecularly, and this reaction would be highly favorable. So normal men, normally, amine formation is something that will happen very readily. I've also found this reaction when I did it in the labs in the past to be slightly solvent dependent. And ethanol seems to be the best way how to do this reaction to then reduce it to the amine. Um, it will happen in other solvents, including in water, but it will be slower. The inamine formation. So the inamine is gonna be this group down here. So this will happen when you react a secondary amine, okay? And the secondary amine, it cannot lose water or it doesn't have a hydrogen left on the nitrogen and therefore the water loss must happen in a different place. So the first step will be the same. You will be forming a hemi aminal. It's not a happy animal, as I just said. It's a hemi aminal. And therefore, once the carbon loses the water, as we've seen in the previous step here, it has no hydrogens on the nitrogen that it can lose. So it will lose a hydrogen on another carbon. 
forming an alkene and a nitrogen group. And this is the mechanism. So the water will be lost, forming a positive carbon. Positive carbon will interact with the nitrogen and form a resonance form there. Then you will lose an alpha hydrogen, forming a double bond, giving the electrons back to the nitrogen. And this is very reactions. Oh, very reactive, not very reactions. It is very, very reactive. The Wolf-Kishner reduction, and we'll close this lecture here. Okay, the Wolf-Kishner reduction is something that is very, very important. We'll be using hydrazine. And here you will end up with a carbon-hydrogen bond instead of carbon double bond oxygen. Now, here you are going to be using hydrazine. The hydrazine adds onto the carbonyl nucleophilically, then it dehydrates, forming an amine. Okay, or this is called an acetone hydrazone because it started from hydrazine. But this hydrazone can then react, so the hydrazone is this group, just to make it clear. This hydrazone can then react with a base at around 200 degrees Celsius in a specific solvent. So this is an ether with two alcohol groups at the ends, and it releases nitrogen and the al alkyl carbon. And this is what happens. Okay, and this is why I told you we'll stop here for today because this mechanism is a little bit heavy. So I would highly recommend that you actually try and decide, listen, let me take a look and try to do this on my own. We've done a few mechanisms today. Let's take a deep breath and actually try to do this on your own. Now, I know that was quite a few students have asked me, how do I study organic chemistry? This is how. But I will try, I will have a, small record, a short recording to actually explain how to study it later on. But this is how you have this mechanism. So start. The base will attack the most acidic hydrogen. There are there are only one there are only one type of hydrogen here, that those two. Therefore, it will attack that hydrogen to produce a negative charge on the carbon on the nitrogen. This negative charge is then going to be transferred to resonance forms with the carbon. Okay, and you will end up forming this compound here or this ion, which can interact with water. Once it interacts with water, it's going to form a carbon hydrogen bond. So now, pretty much, it's going to be very difficult to go back to the C double bond N because you formed a new carbon hydrogen bond. This process will then repeat, and again, the most acidic hydrogen is going to be the one. On the nitrogen, you do the N double bond N now. And you will form a negative charge, which on the nitrogen, and to stabilize that, you can give the electrons to the nitrogen nitrogen bond, forming a nitrogen triple bond nitrogen bond. And from the nitrogen carbon, it goes back to the carbon. And here you will end up releasing nitrogen. And from now on, this is irreversible. Once you lose nitrogen, nitrogen is highly unreactive. And this will end up, and this will end up then extracting a proton from water. And once you extract the proton from water, you will actually be in a position where you can actually form the alkyl carbon. In fact, this reaction is normally done without isolating the hydrazone. That will probably reduce, that will probably reduce your yield. Trying to purify the hydrazone, the hydrazone is quite unstable. Okay, therefore it will reduce the, the yield. The hydrazone can easily react with water to form the carbonyl and the amine. The reaction in fact is reversible, maybe not as reversible as some other reactions, but it is reversible. Okay, so you have to pay a lot of attention. This can be hydrolyzed and it goes back. So let's see. So can you see 
all of these reactions here, you have the reversible design. So if you have a acid, you will end up going back to the original carbonyl and amine. Now, next lesson, I will be recording the remaining of the chapter. So I think we have a fair few slides, but I think we'll be able to finish it off. Now on Volhart, you have these type of groups, these type of charts. I'm not gonna tell you, you have to know every single reaction there, but after each chapter, we have done every single reaction. So this is a good way how to ensure that you know what you're doing. Volhard, the book is amazing. You even have where you're gonna be studying those chapters. So I would really, really, really state, please make sure that you are familiar with these reactions. But as I told you, I will be sending you a short video on how to study organic. Okay, now that we have a month left for the exams, you should be in exam study mode. Okay, which I will be helping by sending you a few more papers. Now, I, I have held on to the papers because I wanted to make sure that we first finish the syllabus so that you can answer the papers because otherwise you would start to panic. Okay, so for today, I'm gonna stop the recording here. If you have any problems, please feel free to email me. My email is gonna be available, okay? So if you have any problems, just email at any time. And I will be, I will try to reply ASAP. See you, take care and have fun.